All right, I'm gonna try my best at documenting the process of turning this curly maple two by four, four by four into some drum shells. Here we go. The board's a bit over 99 inches, so we're going to bifurcate it into two more manageable boards that are about, let's say, 49 and five eight inches long. So we'll put a mark there, square it up, make a line. So now that the board is cut down to a more manageable size, keep in mind this is for 14 inch diameter snare drums. If it were bass drums, 18 inch to 20 inch, the board would be cut in a much different way. Uh, much longer here and much shorter on the second piece to maybe get some 12 inch diameter or 10 inch diameter drums out of that. So what I'm going to do now is just joint down one side to keep it flush uh, on the bandsaw with my jointer and I've got it held down with some clamps just so it doesn't move on me. We have that done on both of them. We're going to uh, rip the widths that we want on the table saw before we send them through the band saw. On one, I will probably go thicker at about nine inches. And on the other one, I will probably do seven inches and uh, use the cutoff for reinforcement rings. Okay, now that that's finished, I will mill them in half here at the band saw. As you can see, I have it set up for deeper stock. Uh, the top blade guard does not fit on in this uh particular setup because it gets in the way i don't find there to be any problem making cuts though especially with this jig that i've made to make sure uh get them right in half So the next step is planing. And before I start planing, what I like to do is on the outside, just make a nice big arrow showing which way the grain is running because you never wanna run against the grain in a planer. So at the end of the process, I like these guys to be a quarter inch and so when I'm planing them, I plane them quite a bit proud. And I actually have a little mark here on my planer to where it seems to be about the sweet spot uh, that gives me enough leeway when sanding and doing all that business to not have to worry about taking off too much material and uh, still working them in a manageable way after being steamed. I tried to feed them in one right after the other just to avoid snipe. So as you can see, I like to plane the material to about five eighths of an inch, maybe a little bit shy. That last little bit is just there to allow for material removal during the sanding and sculpting process. Now we will cut these to their final length, including the length left over for the three inch scarf joint, which for me is exactly 47 inches. Now, since this one has a blemish at the end that uh, will probably split in the bending process, I'm just gonna cut it down and make it a 12 inch, which will be about 40, inches, 40 and 3 fourths inches. And for the reinforcement rings here, the length at the end with the scarf joints is 45 inches. 
Now what I like to do for the scarf joint is get the outside diameter. I like to bend these so the diameter on the outside is 14 inches exactly so I can remove material down to 13 and 7 eighths inches. So uh, you multiply that outside diameter 14 by 3.141592 pi and you get about 44 inches, 43.9. So I like to mark at it, I like to mark it at about 44 and then from 44 onwards to the end will be the scarf joint. This is the time where you will be picking out which side you would like to be the outside, what way you think that the wood would bend most properly. So take your time, check the wood out. Uh, if you see anything that looks like it could be solved by bending it the opposite direction, bend it in the other way. Uh, I just like the way this side looks and this curly maple is beautiful for bending. So we're gonna go with this out for the outside and then I will choose the outside for the rest of these. All right, now it is scarf joint time. I'm sanding them on the belt sander with this crude little scarf joint jig, but man, does it work. All right, let's get going. All that's left for today is to rip these in half for four reinforcement rings, and then tomorrow we'll put them in for a soak. Thank you.